Hi everyone, and welcome back to Keep the Peace. We're back with another Ninjago January 2024 set review. This time it's the biggest set of the wave, set number 71809, Eagle the Master Dragon. This set has 532 pieces, goes for $59.99 in pounds or $69.99 in dollars or euros. We got this set along with the others sent to us by the LEGO Ambassador Network, but my opinions on the set are my own. So let's get into the review. Here's everything you get in this set. The main build of course is Eagle the Master Dragon. We also get this small side build which holds onto the Magic Mallet and the Gong of Shattering. And minifigure wise we get Sora, Nia and Lloyd on the ninja side. And for the villains we get Lord Raz and Cinder. Let's look at our minifigures first starting out with the ninja. From left to right we have Sora, Nia and Lloyd. Sora uses her exact same design from the 2023 Dragons Rising sets, with her dual molded cat ear hood, dark blue armor piece and printing on the torso and legs, as well as her fantastic golden printed arm. Always really great to get arm printing in Ninjago minifigures and it looks so nice. Lloyd and Nia are using their new mech suits in this set, these suits have this new dual molded hood piece which I think is a really cool mold. The suit design is a lot more futuristic, featuring armor that goes over a more simple gi, with these golden little details like the first letter of their name. If we rotate these minifigures to the back, you can see that they can all hold katanas on their back with their armor pieces. With Sora using the Dragon's Rising armor piece and Lloyd and Nia using their Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitzu one. If we take away the accessories from these minifigures, you get a better look at all of the face prints. These are all reused from last year's Dragon's Rising set. We can rotate the minifigures to the back and that way you can see the back of their torso printing with Lloyd and Nia's featuring that armor design similar to the front with their name written out in ninjargon at the top of the suit. Nia also gets her hair and headband piece in the set, which is really cool. It's a bit odd that only she gets one, but I mean it's better than not getting it I guess. For our villains we're getting Lord Raz and Cinder. It seems like Lord Raz is more of a fan of the color purple now. He uses the same headpiece he used last year, but now he's using a purple version of the Stone Warrior armor piece, as well as a black and purple robe with this blue armor and the wolf symbol. This Ross figure sadly doesn't have arm printing, I assume he's wearing sleeves now. Cinder reuses the same torso and legs from Jordana, as well as this fur coat piece in sand blue. The prints on his torso and legs spell out the words Wolf Moon. Cinder has a very interesting headpiece, it is in this new transparent plaque color and has a printed face on it that's partially covered in smoke. He also has this swooshy hairpiece in grey, tying together the smoke look. This is also great for anyone who wants to make a custom twitchy Tim minifigure. If we rotate the figures to the back, you can see Cinder's armor prints continue here. And Raz has this big moon symbol on the back with the name Ra spelled out here in ninjargon as well as some more of that shiny blue armor. If we take away some of the accessories, you get a bit of a better look at the prints, including Cinder's alternate face, showing more of his actual face. And if we look at the back, you get a better look at all that back printing. With all these figures, we get a bunch of accessories as well. The ninja all get golden katanas. You can put them on their backs with their armor pieces. Cinder gets this brick build sword with that curved blade piece and Raz once again gets a hammer, this time with a spike on the back. In our little side build we also get two minifigure accessories, the magic mallet and the gong of shattering. You can see them on Raz here. The magic mallet is this little brick build hammer, it's quite simple but it looks very nice and the gong of shattering is a printed golden minifigure shield with this cool face design on the front, it's a very nice print. On the border here, on the Gong of Shattering, we also have three Ninjargon letters. It's a G-O-S. At first I wasn't sure what they stand for, but I think it's just Gong of Shattering. So that makes sense. These two items go into this little side build, which has some tree branches here on the top with magenta leaves. The Gong is hanging on here, while the mallet is clipped at an angle here at the bottom. I think that looks quite nice. The back of this little side build is basically just flat. Here's the overall dragon build. Like a lot of other Ninjago dragons, this one stands on four legs, has two wings on the back and of course a long tail and the head in the front. The dragon is mostly symmetrical with only some small differences in the tip of the tail and the little clip that holds onto an eagle's sword. 
Speaking of his sword, Eagle has a sword. And how cool is that? A dragon with a sword. The sword build is connected basically to his waist. It's on this little golden clip in this area where we have these red slopes on both sides. These have some nice stickers on them, making them kind of look like a belt or some kind of wrapping. And this is also the area where you can place a minifigure to ride the dragon. But back to the sword. We want to see how Eagle wields it, so we can take off the sword and then attach it to this little clip here on the tail. This clip has these golden pieces around it, so it looks like he's firmly holding onto the sword with his tail. And since the tail itself has a couple of wall joint connections, you can pull off quite some fun poses with the sword. The sword itself is fairly simple, it uses old golden blade piece, a dish and a telescope as the hilt, as well as the little tassel here in the back. The tail is built with four segments connected with mixel joints. They all have white pieces at the bottom and black pieces on the top. With these little small slopes, brackets and a new recolor of the SCCBS armor piece in the back here. The last segment is connected to the body of the dragon with double mixel joints, which I think is a good choice. That way you can still move it left to right, but the weight of the tail doesn't drag down the whole tail. As decorations for the tail, we have these dark tan round pieces with these feather pieces or horn pieces on there, which I assume are supposed to be some kind of fur. The hind legs are connected via these normal ball joint connections. With this ball joint piece on an axle, we have this little disc here and the back as a decoration. But because of the way the ball joint is connected here, you can't really bend it outward very far, you can mostly just rotate it. The leg itself is rounded out with different slopes, including this white wedge part here. The lower leg is built with the wedge pieces and it connects to the foot with a mixel joint. The foot has this raised up part here where the mixel socket is attached. And the socket itself is attached via some slopes and bracket pieces. The foot build has this three claw design using the mech finger pieces in gold. The torso is also layered with black on top and white on the belly. With some black tiles here as detailing on the sides between those two layers. Shaping wise there are basically very raised shoulders, then the seat for the minifigure in this lowered area and then it goes up again in the back. In that front area we have these round pieces making it look very smooth overall here. On the top of this very smooth area we once again have the dark tan round pieces with the feather pieces attached, similar decorations like the tail. This one in the front is at an angle with this hinge piece so you can kinda angle it up but I don't really see a point why you would want to do that. Below the connection to the neck there's this textured piece to once again give the look of a bit of fur. The connection to the front legs are very far at the top here, it uses the old Knight Kingdom style joints that can be rotated and angled inward and outward. The upper arms are built with a lot of dark tan pieces, some of them are rock pieces, some of them are with stickers with these little fur details on them. The front legs are built around an SCCBS limb piece, which you can't really see that much the way it is used. Between the top part and the lower part there's a lot of different slopes and wedges. This adds some textures and I think that looks quite nice. The lower leg uses this big curved slope piece with a sticker on it, which once again has a fur design with maybe these little bits of dirt. The feet are once again connected by mixel ball joints, but around the ankles we have these red pieces including this little flag piece here on the back to make it kind of look like there's some kind of cloth wrapping around the ankles here. I think this is a nice detail. The flag piece can be moved left and right here to pose it a little bit. We have three toes in the front of the foot which are built with these brick pieces here connected by clips and we have these little claws in gold here at the front as well. The neck can be moved side to side and rotated with that same kind of joint we had for the front legs. It continues the black and white color scheme with the same feather decoration on top. And on both sides we have this round tile with a sticker on it, which is just some kind of symbol here. I'm not sure what it means, I don't think it's ninjargon or anything. The neck connects to the head with a ball joint so we have a good amount of posability for the head itself. The head build here is super unique with of course that big hat that is built with the large dish piece in tan and a little minifigure hat on top and the beard here in the front which connects directly to this new dragon head mold. This new dragon head piece mold has studs here in the front that attach the beard, it has printed on eyes as well as some studs here on top which are used to connect the hat to it. 
On the lower half of the head, we also have a bit of beard. This is brick build with different kinds of horn pieces in white on the underside of that classic dragon head piece. The lower jaw can be opened and closed, similar to how a lot of modern Ninjago dragons do it, with this little double clip part here in the back. To have the two head pieces aligned, this back part has to be angled forward a little bit. In the mouth we have this blue piece, I don't know what this is supposed to be, maybe some kind of energy he's blasting out of his mouth. If we look under the head, we can see that there's these golden pieces, these might be some kind of horns or maybe hair, but I think they look quite nice. Eagle has two big wings, these are built similar to how other dragons do it, basically with a Technic skeleton underneath, and then on the upper side you add this vinyl wing piece on top of that. The print of the vinyl piece once again makes the wings look a little bit fuzzy or covered in fur with different shades of tan or brown. For some little extra detail we have these little golden pieces here at the ends of the wing as well as these little claws in the front. The wings are attached via ball joints so we have quite a good range of motion to pose them but they are a bit limited in how far they can go forward. Here you can get a look at the spare pieces in this set. This set is the only one with stickers in this wave, so here you can see the empty sticker sheet. And we also get the wings in this vinyl sheet where you basically just take them out. The set has one instruction booklet with an ad for the other sets here in the back. And unlike a lot of the other sets in this wave, this one came with plastic bags, at least in my copy. Okay, it's time to give you my overarching thoughts and opinions about this set. And I want to start out by like saying like, in general, this is just a very good dragon build. And I think that's kind of a trend in recent Ninjago sets. By now they have a really good system for these dragons with like the pre-molded head pieces, the vinyl wings, the way they do articulation with like a good mix of those hinge pieces and ball joints. I think generally we're at a point where they do a lot of dragons in this kind of style and this follows that same style. And I think that's a good thing because it's just a good way to do Lego dragons and this is different. What this dragon has, what a lot of the other dragons don't really do, is it has so much personality. Like with the beard, the hat, the sword on the tail, it's just like, it's it's a character. Um, the only one that's kind of similar is like Wu's dragon from Possession, and which was one of my favorite Ninjago dragons. But this one seems a lot more human, um, with like wearing a hat, having these cloth wrappings. It seems very much like it's a person the ninja are gonna interact with in the show, and I'm really excited to see how this character is gonna work in the show a master dragon that's a new concept i mean is that like is it similar to a matriarch or firstborn we'll find out hopefully in the show but i'm very excited to see what eagle's gonna have in store in the show the set also has some quite good minifigures especially the villains i like a lot with Roz and cinder cinder i really like how they did the head with the smoky design it's very interesting very different than your normal lego minifigure and Roz, i like his new purple suit it looks very cool i do wish his arm printing I also generally like the mech suits for Nia and Lloyd. I just wish for Sora we could have gotten a new design. So generally I think this set is very good. There's just one problem and that's the price. This set is $69.99 so almost $70 and I don't think this is a $70 dragon. If you look at it from the other side it's very thin. It's not like it's not bigger than you'd expect. I think it has 532 pieces. It's like the same price for Lloyd's legendary dragon which I think is quite a bit bigger. And even that wasn't like the best price ever at the time. Um, it was considered like it's okay. So I don't think this is a great deal. I do think once you have it, it's a good set. But I would recommend you to wait for maybe a discount if you want to get this dragon. Thank you all so much for watching my review. We have one more Ninjago Dragons Rising set review coming for the 4 plus sets, Eren's Battle Mech. And once again, big thank you to the LEGO Ambassador Network for sending us all these sets. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see that last review and all the other content we have here on Keep the Peace. See ya!